In today's episode of Spirit of Innovation, join us on an insider's tour of Hemet's Western Science Center. So part of what we do is keep these fossils and artifacts safe for the future so that future generations can enjoy them. We discover how California's child care subsidy reform affects thousands of Riverside County families. Families are struggling to pay for child care even if their income does seem to be at a reasonable level. We spotlight how the community is coming together to build a Holocaust Remembrance Memorial. The biggest thing that's in my heart is to ensure that we leave something in this valley in southwest Riverside County. This month's Spirit of Innovation welcomes guest host Carly bennett Valle, CEO and CFO of the Boys and Girls Club of Southwest County. She has 20 years of nonprofit experience and started working with the Boys and Girls Club eight years ago as a part-time bookkeeper. She then served in many other roles that included development, special events, and facilities. Now she oversees this organization that supports thousands of youth in Southwest Riverside County. Stay with us as the Spirit of Innovation team and our guest host, Carly, bring you impactful and innovative, need to know, did you know, and good to know local community news and information. Welcome to Spirit of Innovation. Thanks for joining us. My name is Carly Bennett Valle, and I am so happy to be here guest hosting this month's episode of Spirit of Innovation. September is when our summer vacations turn into memories and kids head back to school. It's also crunch time for many parents as they juggle before and after school care with work hours. For some families, relatives and friends are available to step in to help. Other families depend on various programs in the community to provide this vital service. We're fortunate that Riverside County has many options for parents to choose from. Here's more. When it comes to before and after school care, parents have to weigh what's best for their child's interest and personality. Some children may feel more comfortable in smaller group care, while others may thrive in larger community settings. The Boys and Girls Club of Southwest County was started 33 years ago when the community needed a safe place for children to go when they weren't in school. Now three locations in Temecula, Marietta, and Lake Elsinore provide some transportation to and from school and offer homework help, tutoring services, and fun activities. Most school districts provide before and after school care. Since they're held on school grounds, transportation is typically not an issue. Examples of these programs are the basis programs in Temecula Valley Unified School District, the SEED program in Marietta Valley School District, and Think Together in Paris Val Verde School District. Private child care centers also offer after school care and some transportation services. Child Time Learning Center and Tutor Time Learning Center are two examples of these types of facilities. They also include homework support and other activities. Some children are more comfortable in a home setting. The state of California provides a website where parents can search for licensed home-based childcare that take in school-aged children. Some of these providers also offer transportation services. Other options are personal development classes, such as those found at School of Rock, Mathnasium, and GDS Creative Academy. While these aren't childcare services, it's an opportunity for children to gain creative enrichment outside of school. You can go to the Spirit of Innovation website to learn more about the Boys and Girls Club of Southwest County and all the organizations mentioned to find the one that's right for your family. In related news, just two months ago, California government leaders reformed state subsidized childcare in what advocates are hailing as a transformative move. We take a look at why this was needed and how it will benefit families here in Riverside County. As the cost of living continues to rise, many families need dual incomes to pay the bills. According to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, a Riverside County family of four requires an income of almost $113,000 just to make ends meet. Add the cost of childcare to the mix and balancing the household, budget becomes even more difficult. Typically, a family with an infant can expect to pay anywhere from $900 to about $1,200 a month. And a family with a preschool child can expect to pay anywhere between $800 to $950 a month. 
Families are struggling to pay for childcare for a couple of factors. One being if they have more than one child, that does double the expense or triple the expense. In addition, although their incomes have increased over the past few years, so have the costs for everything else. So gas is more expensive, groceries are more expensive, housing is more expensive. The state government helps alleviate this burden by subsidizing daycare for qualifying families. Us, we follow the state income ceilings, which the maximum is set at the state median income of 85%, which to bring that into terms that someone might understand, um, for a family of four, that's just over $8,000 a month gross before any taxes or expenses are considered. While subsidies cover the majority of daycare costs, before the pandemic, most families had to make a co-payment, also known as family fees based on monthly income and family size. State family fees started at a pretty low income level. For many families, it was a significant amount of money, uh, oftentimes several hundreds of dollars a month. Many would decline the childcare services because they couldn't afford the state family fee. For the past three years, fees have been waived due to COVID, a welcome relief to many. It really did highlight the importance of childcare in the state of California. It really supported our essential workers, and it really did put that into focus for our legislators. So they did make the investments to ensure that families would have access to services to keep our families working and going to school. The pause on family fees wasn't meant to be permanent. On October 1st, the fee system will be reinstated, but it has undergone what many call a long overdue reform. It assesses state family fees at a much higher income level, and the maximum state family fee is just over $60 a month. So it's much more affordable, and it covers the services for the whole family. When state family fees are paid, it actually goes back into the child care funding to pay for child care for other families. We know that when you have a two-parent household, to be able to live in California and afford everything that you need to survive, really both parents need to be working, and the child care subsidized programs really do help to support all families, to keep them employed, and to keep our workforce in place. Wondering if you can qualify for subsidized child care? Go to the Spirit of Innovation website to find out. If you have old batteries around the house, you might be tempted to just toss them in your trash or recycling bin, but don't. Disposed batteries are the leading cause of fires in waste and recycling facilities. But this problem can be alleviated if we all followed safety guidelines. Here's Spirit of Innovation Director Scott Strand reporting with more information. Thank you, Carly. Improper disposal of batteries is a serious issue. The California Product Safety Council found that in 83% of the recycling facilities they surveyed had experienced fires, and 65% of those fires were caused by batteries in the waste stream. We mainly have to worry about lithium batteries since they contain enough energy to start fires even when used. When lithium batteries are placed in the trash or general recycling bins, they can become damaged or crushed releasing energy that sparks fires. There are two types of lithium batteries, single-use non-rechargeable and rechargeable lithium polymer cells. Lithium single-use batteries are very common and used in products such as cameras, remote controls, and smoke detectors. They also include button cell or coin batteries, which can be found in small devices such as watches, hearing aids, and calculators. Rechargeable lithium polymer cells are in many of our everyday items, such as cell phones, power tools, digital cameras, and e-cigarettes. When your lithium batteries need to be replaced, remove them from the product and keep each battery in its own separate plastic bag or place non-conductive tape, such as electrical tape, over the battery's terminals to prevent them from touching and causing sparks. Take your used lithium batteries to specialized battery recyclers, participating retailers that provide battery take-back services, or household hazardous waste collection programs. If the batteries are not removable, you'll need to bring the entire device to the specialized battery recycling center. What about common alkaline and sink carbon batteries such as these? While they're not as dangerous as lithium batteries, per the California law, they're considered hazardous waste due to the toxic chemicals they contain. So they also need to go to recycling facilities and not the trash can. If you don't know where to recycle your batteries, the website earth911.com will point you in the right direction. Now back to you, Carly. Thanks, Scott. 
Another benefit to recycling batteries is the ability to recover minerals such as lithium, nickel, cobalt, and graphite. The more of these minerals we obtain from consumer waste, the less we have to mine the earth. The Spirit of Innovation website has more information on the subject. If you have been to Marietta's Town Square Park, then you've seen the remarkable Veterans Memorial on display. Nearby, you can also see the land set aside for a Holocaust Remembrance Memorial. Plans are in the works for it to be built soon, thanks to community donations and the work of a dedicated group of volunteers. Spirit of Innovation has more. The Holocaust Remembrance Foundation of the Valley was created to preserve the memory of the Holocaust so that no one will ever forget its horrors. The reason it was started was basically because uh, people began to not understand what the Holocaust was. Some people will even deny that it took place. And so in 2013, our founder, his name was Jack Flanoy, who has passed at this point, um, and his wife Jan, who still works with us, um, they uh, knew that they needed to bring something into this valley because there's a rich history of Jewish tradition uh, in the Murrieta Valley. Jewish presence in the region began with the early pioneers such as Louis Wolf. He moved to the area in 1857 and became known as the King of Temecula. His assistant, Simon Levi, who was also Jewish, helped develop the Jewish community in San Diego. Marietta Hot Springs Resort opened in 1902 and featured a Star of David on the entryway to welcome its many Jewish visitors. The city of Lake Elsinore was incorporated as Elsinore in 1888 and was filled with kosher meat markets and two synagogues to cater to a thriving Jewish community. After World War II, a number of Holocaust survivors um, resettled here in uh, the Marietta Temecula Valley. The synagogues were started um, and then there was a great opportunity to work together. We want to educate people as to what the Holocaust was and um, what they can do to be a part of uh, making sure that it never happens again. That's our mantra, never again. The International March of Remembrance came to the United States to honor the Holocaust survivors. The foundation organized Marietta's first March of Remembrance in 2014 now an annual event with hundreds of attendees. Our goal is to get as many people uh, to the march so that they get an understanding of uh, what the Holocaust was, uh, to ask questions of uh, our team that's there, and to hear about what it was like from a survivor or a survivor's family. In December 2018, the Marietta City Council gave the foundation approval to build a memorial at Town Square Park. Once it's built, it will be the only Holocaust memorial in southwest Riverside County. We're probably about 25% there, um, but we want to get over 50% roughly uh, to be able to start the whole project. We, we will have 10 panels uh, that will tell the story from the start of anti-Semitism to Hitler's uh, last solution uh, to resistance, uh, to the time when Israel became a country again, and then um, out of despair, hope is the last panel. And it basically says that there is hope through all of the things that took place. And the biggest thing that's in my heart is to ensure that we leave something in this valley in Southwest Riverside County that really honors those people that passed away during uh, the Holocaust. Our goal is to get school classes to come and, and um, walk through and families to come and, and be a part you know, of what's going on there. Make sure that education becomes uh, an essential part of who we are and what we do. The lessons from the past help shape our present and future. The Holocaust Memorial will ensure that we and future generations will never forget. On Thursday, September 28th, you can support the mission to establish a Holocaust Memorial. The foundation is partnering with Sebastian Seedy with a fundraising concert at South Coast Winery. Tickets are on sale now. Let's go back in time and get a fantastic prehistoric look into what is now Riverside County. Spirit of Innovation takes you inside the Western Science Center and all it has to offer. You might be surprised to find a beautiful museum in the otherwise unassuming landscape of Hammond. Yet in 2006, the city became home to one of the largest natural history museums in the county, the Western Science Center. 
When people are thinking about going to a museum in the region, a lot of them are thinking that they have to go all the way to Los Angeles or all the way to San Diego. But in the past couple of years, that's really changed. I think we've done a good job of letting people know that we're here. And when I go to events or I talk to people at the front desk, what I'm hearing a lot of is instead of, oh my goodness, I never knew this place existed, is, oh, I've been meaning to come here. The Western Science Center might not have been built had it not been for the creation of Diamond Valley Lake. So when they constructed Diamond Valley Lake um, in the 1990s, is one of the largest earth-moving projects um, in the United States at the time. When they were in the process of digging, they discovered archaeological and paleontological objects. All of these fossils, all of these artifacts needed a place to go. And so they built the Western Science Center originally to house the over 100,000 fossils and artifacts that were found as a result of the Diamond Valley Lake project. Over the years, the museum has grown to hold a million specimens. We have fossils from here in Hemet. We have fossils from Lake Elsinore. We have fossils from Temecula. We have fossils and artifacts from all across this amazing metropolitan region we call the Inland Empire. And I think that's really important because it really gives Riverside County a place to keep all of their uh, natural history and a place for them to share their natural history. And I think the way to get people more interested in science and to care about science more deeply is to really connect it um, to a sense of place and to a sense of community where they live. This community connection is a big part of the museum's mission to discover the past, explore the present, and promote a sustainable future. So part of what we do is keep these fossils and artifacts safe for the future so that future generations can enjoy them. We also have a lot of programs, events, and educational activities that make sure that not only are we conducting science and preserving science for the future, but also that we're educating people about science. That's a huge part of our mission is making sure that people are aware that we exist and are aware that we have a lot of science to share with them. Visitors who want to take a peek into the prehistoric past only need to step inside. I think our main exhibit hall is pretty darn impressive because that still has Max the Mastodon, who was one of the most beautiful fossils to come out of Diamond Valley Lake. And he's mounted right next to Xena the Mammoth. So when you walk into the exhibit, you get to see this Mastodon and this Mammoth and know that they used to live here, that those used to be your neighbors. Right now, we also have a temporary exhibit going on called Beyond the Barstow. And so when we talk about the Barstow, you might be thinking about the town. But the Barstow is also referring to a geological formation and a period of time about 14 to 16 million years ago. And it allows you to look at the Barstowian time period and look at all these really unusual animals that used to live in the United States at that time. And we do have dinosaurs in addition to mammals. So there's all sorts of cool creatures for people to look at. Any exhibit we have has some sort of interactive component. So if you've got little kids and you're trying to find something for them to do during the day, uh, this is a great option. With a natural history museum right in your own backyard, it's a short trip to see what discoveries you can dig up. You won't be disappointed. If you've had a fun experience visiting the Western Science Center, we want to know. Post a photo of your visit on our Facebook page. Now it's time to share local community events, heartwarming news, and good to know topics and information. Here to get us started are SOI team members Aaron Porras and Tyler Perrone. Thank you, Carly. Here are the good to know happenings. Starting off with events in Temecula, Maddox's Market is dedicated to kids and to local special needs businesses and community. On October 7th, come the Bastards Canteen for some trunk or treating, face painting, sensory booths, a meet and greet with Corella DeVille, and more. If you like family camping in the Halloween season, then head over to the KOA campground at Vale Lake between October 12th and the 15th. Enjoy Halloween fun such as site decorating contests, a pumpkin patch, costume contests for all ages, even pets, and more. At the Promenade Mall, join Michelle's Place for their annual Walk of Hope and Breast Cancer Awareness Vendor Fair on October 22nd. You can sign up to join the walk at michellesplace.org slash events. There is a lot happening in Lake Elsinore as well. Love a nice glass of wine and painting? Romeo and Friends, a nonprofit organization supporting the special needs population, 
is holding their third annual paint and sip fundraiser on September 23rd at Lakeland Village School. In the mood to party? Medcare Farms is hosting a free reggae super party on September 30th from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Also on September 30th, Champion Cooling Systems is holding their sixth annual car and truck show at the outlets at Lake Elsinore. Check out classics and modern day cars and trucks. The event is free to attend and a blast for the whole family. If you love spending time in your garden, the Murrieta Public Library is hosting a garden club on October 2nd, where anyone can gather and show their love for all things growing. Of course, along with gardening comes some bugs. You can let kids ages 5 to 12 join the library's bug party on October 11th to discover live insects with entomologist Amelia Burnham and make their own Build-A-Bug take-home kit. At the Murrieta Hot Springs Resort, job seekers are invited to attend a free job fair on October 23rd to learn about the many job opportunities offered at the new facility. Speaking of job fairs, Job Fair X is hosting a virtual job fair for veterans living in Menifee. This event will be held on Thursday, September 28th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Over in Moreno Valley, you can enjoy fun events such as the monthly Moreno Valley Cruise Night, a car show held every second Saturday next to Arburger and supports Riverside County's Historical Society. Maybe you want to check out new EVs or learn more about them. The Moreno Valley Mall is hosting an EV showcase this Saturday, September 24th, where you can check out these electrifying vehicles. That's it for our Good to Know. Now back to you, Carly. Thank you, Tyler and Aaron. It's good to know that there are so many exciting events happening in our county. At JDS Creative Academy, the fall visual performing and digital arts classes are up and going strong. Still to start is the Design, Build, and Haunt program, a hands-on production class that brings the JDS Creative Academy Haunted Studio to life. Here's more. Come on out for this year's Haunted Studio on September 27th. Design, build, and then haunt at the annual JDS Haunted Studio Fundraiser, October 27th and 28th. Sign up for all the fun at jdscreativeacademy.org. Wow, that looks like a fun class, doesn't it? The students will be working hard, so you won't want to miss the haunted JDS studio. But there's also a bloody good time happening outside the studio as well. Check it out. October 27th and 28th. JDS Creative Academy presents its annual Haunted Studio Fundraiser. Eat, drink, and be scary with some extra special treats from our bake sale. <laughs> Prepare to be scared by our spooktacular hunts. Be there. Be scared. <laughs> We know you're dying to have a good time. <laughs> After all, ghouls just want to have fun. Thank you for joining us for the sixth season opener of Spirit of Innovation. You can find Spirit of Innovation on Rivco TV, Menifee, Marietta, and Temecula local stations. The show is also streamed on YouTube and Facebook and up on our spiritofinnovation.org website. Are you following the Facebook page, Spirit of Innovation Local News? This is the new page. Please find us there. The old page is now deleted. The Spirit of Innovation website has the current episode along with past episodes and individual segments to keep you in the know. Use the hashtag JDS Family to keep up with everything happening here at JDS Studio and in Riverside County. Don't miss the SOI training crew on radio station 
1025 The Vine, seven days a week with the JDS Creative Academy Community Spotlight. You can also catch the SOI crew streaming the SOI update on YouTube and co-hosting our podcast, SOI Talk, anywhere you stream podcasts. The next episode of Spirit of Innovation drops on October 26th with a new special surprise guest host. Who will it be? Tune in to find out. Until then, SOI out.